There we go. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back, and I am going to demonstrate how to. Oh, I should probably share my screen with you guys, so I'm not not dumb. There we go. Okay, now you guys can see my screen. I'm going to demonstrate to you guys how I would do the bear heads as well as the eggs and the animal eggs and whatnot and talk about a few best practices as far as drawing digitally is concerned. Does that sound okay? Cool. I'm just checking my audio to make sure it's capturing. It is. Video is good. Desktop, I say something else? Yep, I just wanted to see the desktop audio spiked a little bit. So, okay, we're good. So, here I've got the sheet of heads open in my drawing program. Um, this one is Krita. Uh, I'm just going to prefer to draw in Krita because it's a little bit more of a fluid situation for me, but you can draw in whatever program you want. Uh, mainly the technical side of this is just that I've got a blank layer for doing my drawings, as you can see, and I've got a second layer that has my sheet. Okay, So I want to make sure to get the sheet nice and big on my page. If you're scaling it, just be sure not to squish it, usually by holding shift to lock proportions. Get it nice and big, whatever is reasonable. I think something slightly larger than my drawing surface area is going to be okay for this. Probably about like there. And then move it into a oh, there we go. Move it into a position where you're going to be able to see your reference and draw next to it at the same time. Okay? So I'm going to put the bear way over here on the left so that I can draw over here in the gap on the right. And then sometimes, sorry, it's re-rendering, I will even turn the opacity down so that it's a little less intrusive as I'm doing my drawings, OK? That makes sense to you guys? <clears throat> cool. Let me first then cover some basic mechanical drawing things, OK? I've got a um, digital tablet surface in which I can see my screen, which is really nice. If you have a tablet in your lap, it's not really that different, slightly less convenient, but the mechanics are very similar. One of the important things you got to do, though, is if you were drawing on your tabletop, let me draw a tabletop, and your tablet is completely flat like this with your hand just sitting here, pencil, and now you are sitting in your chair over here somewhere and you're looking way up here at a monitor, right? This is pretty awkward, okay? Your hand is doing something completely disconnected from your eyeballs. You're looking somewhere completely different. It's better if you can rotate this thing up somewhat so that you're looking at at least kind of an angle at your drawing surface or so that your hand can move a little bit more in sync with uh, where your eyes are looking. So whatever you can do, if you have to prop it up somehow, or if you have to like put it in the gap between your desk, so let's say these are your legs, and here you're sitting, and then you like prop the tablet on your thighs or something, anything that you can do to try to minimize the angle between your eyes and the surface is going to be good, because you'll end up getting distortion if you don't do that. So if we imagine in your line of sight, if we're looking directly at your monitor, and we drew a circle, it would just look like that. But if it were laying down on a table, the far side of it would look smaller, the near side of it would look bigger, and now suddenly everything looks squished. So you might accidentally overcompensate and draw everything too tall, so that when it's squished down, it ends up looking normal again. Okay. So just be aware of those kinds of mechanical problems. Another thing, let me go ahead and erase all this stuff. Another thing, try to use as much of your arm to draw as possible. Don't try to use your fingertips the way that you write English text with a pencil. Okay, Drawing is different. <clears throat> and especially, drawing on this plastic surface is different. So if I just write my name, hello. I'm Tabor. I'm using entirely my fingertips to do something like that, right? But look at the size of this text relative to the whole screen. It's tiny, right? It's about like, 
I don't know, 5% of the height of the whole screen or something like that. And so if you're trying to draw with your fingertips, you can expect to only kind of get this sort of range from your fingertips. So what I'm doing right now is I'm um, putting my hand on my surface and not moving it at all. I'm just moving my fingertips around. I can't really draw very far that way. And so I'm, I'm only going to be able to make small, tiny little doodles like that, like this. If instead I start to involve my elbow, then I can get a little bit farther, right? Larger kind of size. Also, I'm right-handed. And so this diagonal line, whoop, let me move. I'm actually going to hide this for the moment. This diagonal line is kind of the comfort area that my arm can move in because my shoulder is over here right and my fingertips reach this way so I can sweep out in this direction and it's a little harder to reach over in this direction towards the right and the top and it's really uncomfortable to draw down here towards the bottom because my elbow starts hitting my thighs and it starts hitting my stomach and things like that okay so if I start involving my shoulder then I can draw literally everywhere I can reach I can move the surface around and it becomes more fluid the strokes become larger and more natural and also one side effect is they become more stable so if I'm going to try to draw anything I'm going to try to use the maximum amount of screen real estate that I can and if that means in my document that I have to zoom way in so let's say I want to put a drawing here then I'm going to zoom in and move over and I'm going to make it this big to draw in this space. Okay. Then I'm going to draw using the whole screen real estate that I've got. There we go. And then zoom back out. Okay. So it's tiny in my composition, but while I'm working on it, I want it to be nice and big so I can clearly see what I'm doing. All right. So for you guys, get used to moving around the screen, get used to zooming and unzooming. Okay, so that you're constantly changing the position that you're in in order to draw something else. So if I wanted to put something down on this side, I move over here to draw that thing. If I suddenly want to do something that's larger than that whole object, then I zoom out so I can put, I don't know, big halo on this giant thing, whatever it happens to be. Does that make sense to you guys? Cool. So that's one of the good habits you can start to do. And it's going to reduce instances of um, crooked, wobbly lines because it's uncomfortable to draw. It's also going to get rid of a problem that I sometimes see where people draw things way too tiny and they try to hide it because they're not confident in their drawing ability. Don't do that. Um, it's going to be blurry. It's going to be pixelated. And I'm just going to zoom right in on it anyway. And so now suddenly we're looking at bad drawings that are blurry instead of bad drawings that are crisp. I'd rather you look at uh, crisp bad drawings than blurry bad drawings anyway. Okay. Uh, let's look at some bad habits that I sometimes see. If I were going to try to draw, like let's just say I'll make a heart. Okay, I'm going to make a heart. If I were drawing it like this, too many lines because... So I never committed to any of those lines. I just tried to sketch my way to something kind of resembling a heart. Okay. I also didn't practice my lines. So these I call I call these hairy lines. Okay. And it's because there's way too many strokes. You know, I bet you can hear my pen, can't you? <laughs> there's way too many strokes here. Okay. This is usually a product of um, a lack of confidence, maybe a lack of experience, something like that. Hairy lions. <laughs> Uh, and the way to overcome this is by taking practice strokes at whatever the thing is that you're trying to draw. So let me move over here. So I know I want to make a heart and it's going to be relatively medium sized in the middle of the screen. So first I'm going to imagine where I'm going to begin and I'm going to just move my mouse over the surface. Can you guys see the little mouse cursor moving? Yep. Good. So I'm going to practice that. I'm thinking I'm going to need a straight line. Okay. And then it's going to have to curve. What I could do is maybe go too far and say, I'm going to get this all in one shot. Straight line, curve, change direction, curve, straight line. And I'm going to try to, but now it becomes wild and uncontrolled. It's really hard to do complex shapes all in one go without getting some like lumpiness and 
asymmetry and straight lines, right? So the happy medium here is to just practice one part at a time. So I'm going to want a straight line. Then I'm going to want a curve back here. Practice that. Then I need another curve. Then I need another straight line. Okay. Now that doesn't look perfect or anything, but now I could true it up if I'm happy with it. Or I could fix any asymmetry before I move on. So I could say, oh, you know what? That one went a little bit too far out here. So I'm going to want to race out and make another line for myself to say, here and here is where that should line up. So now I should do what I was supposed to do in the first place and zoom way in. I'm going to take a practice swing at this and go nice line, then another one for here, like that, another one for here, and then a final one down there. And then I can erase out any little extra bits. Okay, Far fewer lines, far more confidence that time. Okay, You could always, too, think of this as our draft of our object, like whatever it is, so you don't have to do perfect line quality the first time. Uh, I'm running out of screen space to do this, but I'll just try it here. Let's say I'm going to want to draw a heart. My more natural way of doing this is I might even give myself a center line to work from. And then I would say, okay, it's going to go this way, and it's going to go this way, and it's going to come in the middle. Okay, so now that was my template, right? That's not my final drawing, that's my template. And then I take a look, make sure that I trim off any little areas that are kind of weird, maybe a race away. And now, because I've got this kind of guide that I've made for my, myself to work with, in fact, you know what? Let's try that one more time. More like that. Okay. Now that I've got this guide to work with, I'll press with more authority and I'll try to make it nicer lines and maybe even zoom in a bit more because these are supposed to be my nice finished lines. So now I'm going to practice. Okay. In fact, maybe I'll go the other way. Maybe I'll go this way this time. Like that. Got a little bit wobbly up at the top there. We could always undo. Try again. There we go. Oh, too high. Try again. Better. Try the other side. Okay. Any of those approaches is better than what I was doing before. Okay. As imperfect as they may be, they're going to look better than the really hairy, weird this. Don't do this. Okay. If you're practicing your hand skill, practice doing things correctly, right? Practice taking one swipe at the line with confidence, with good pen pressure, with good direction. Practice keeping your arm loose and moving. Don't practice bad habits like this. Why would you want that? Okay, try to break loose of those bad habits. Does that make sense, what I just demonstrated? Yeah. Yeah? Anybody feel like I'm talking directly about them? No, come on. <laughs> okay, you'll see me. I sometimes do this still, but I'm aware of it. And when I catch myself, bad me, and I try to change my habit. Um, straight lines is another thing that you can practice sometimes. If you are going too slow or too fast, it can cause a problem. So too slow, you get a wobbly, inconsistent line like that because it's just naturally going to happen because you can't keep that kind of stability for that long. Uh, too fast and you may get bend in the entire surface of the line. Sometimes an S like this inadvertently or C. Okay, So don't be too wild about it but also don't be very very careful and try to trace out your line. Neither one of those are going to help you. There's a happy medium somewhere where you're going to find that there's a natural speed that you're going to want to draw that can keep nice straight lines. All of those were free-handed. They're straight enough. Okay. There's also kind of a limit to the angle that you can draw nice straight lines at. Horizontal is very hard to do uh, until you draw on the upper portion of the tablet, I find. Because if I try to draw like below the 50% line down here, uh, my elbow starts hitting like the desk and my, my thighs and like my stomach and stuff like that. So if I know that I have to draw something down here horizontal, I'll move my canvas up so I can do that straight line higher up on the tablet and then bring it back down again. Uh, vertical lines tend to be fine. You can draw them towards yourself or away from yourself. Just find what your preference is. 
Uh, but anything exceeding this angle, like going off into that direction, because I'm right-handed, starts to get a little bit tougher. Uh, and so we've got kind of this angle of comfort. At that point, you need to know how to rotate your canvas. Okay. A Photoshop program, uh, any of them can rotate the canvas. This one can rotate the canvas too. I just hold shift and uh, spacebar at the same time. And so if I have to draw something in the rest of this space out here, I'm going to rotate my canvas into a different direction, then draw those lines, then rotate back again. Okay. You may have to pencil in some rough guides for yourself before you do something like that. So if I know I'm going to have some weird lines, I might have to pencil in some kind of bad looking ones first, then rotate my canvas, zoom in, make the nice cleaned up stroke, rotate in those other directions. Probably back a little bit, there we go. And then erase out any guidelines that I didn't need. Right? I don't know what this big letter A is supposed to be, but there we go. And then come back to upright again. Usually they'll give you some sort of measurement like that one so that you can say, okay, now I'm back upright again and I can keep drawing for the rest. That makes sense? Okay. So watch your speed, watch your angle, try to keep your arm moving, draw as big as possible. Um, the last part would be the pen pressure. If everything you draw is really, really light, sorry, there's a motorcycle revving outside. If everything you draw is really, really light, then that's great for guidelines. It's great for your first try, but this cannot be your final artwork. Nobody can see that. Um, the opposite is if you etch everything in really dark, then it doesn't leave you any room to fudge it a little bit. In fact, let me change my, my other pencil is better for this because now if I push, it's horrible, right? Oof. It's just, it stands out like crazy. These are very, very dark, heavy lines, okay? But these are really too light to be seen, okay? So the the nice balance between that, let's do, um, I don't know, let's do a star or something, right? There's a, a nice medium kind of tone. If I draw this lighter though, this would be even better to clean up because I'm not gonna need to erase very much. If you end up finding that you're a little heavy handed, just be quick on the eraser to lightly erase away so that you don't see your guidelines so well. I like to leave them just visible if I can and then come back in with my tool and do my nice cleaned up lines, whatever they are. And I, I probably should have rotated my canvas when I did that, but it's a bad example. Okay, makes sense? Yes. Makes sense to Robert. Does it make sense to anybody else? Cool, we got gotcha. you. Yes. No matter what it is you're drawing, it is always better to use your whole arm. Because your wrist, it moves in a, in a pre-described arc, right? But it's going to give you, first, repetitive stress to do that a lot. And two, I can't change that arc. That's it, that's the one arc I've got. If I wanna do a flatter arc, uh, I'm out of luck. I can't make my wrist do that. If I want a curvier arc, I've gotta use my fingers and then it's very unstable. I, I have to use my whole arm for everything. So no matter what it is, straight line, whole arm. Slightly curved, whole arm. More curved, whole arm. Even more curved, whole arm. Always use your arm. It's going to be stable, smoother, easier to control, and because of the plastic on plastic surface that we have to draw on, it's going to give you a lot more control than trying to push and get support off of this plastic surface. That's not true with paper. Paper has tooth and it will resist you, and so it's a little bit easier manually to use a pencil on real world paper, but on a digital tablet, we really don't have any kind of resistance at all. Make sense? Yeah, and it'll be a little unnatural at first, but you kind of get used to it to the point where now I can kind of like write English words with my arm. Hi, I'm 
Tabor. And I'm using my arm to move, but that is a bit weird because now I'm fighting like 20, 25 years of like of school that taught me how to write a certain way. But you know, you could do that if you really wanted to. Okay. Any questions about basic tool usage like that? Good. Okay. Let's take a look at the bear. <clears throat> Some of you were asking questions like, does this count as one drawing or as six or five or however many I did? This is one drawing, right? The circle has a belt put on it, has a second belt put on it, has basic shapes put on it, has the details filled in, one drawing, okay? These are just steps illustrated to help you understand what's going on under the surface, right? So like a pair of these heads, like this um, animal egg down here, this would be the preparatory shape, and then this is the finished shape, okay? And this egg here is the same as every single one of these other characters in the row, right? That first egg is the preparatory shape. The rest of them are just different details of the exact same character. I'm going to move this into place, but first, I was mentioning to um, Nate and Robert earlier that I've been doing this for years, and I've got a whole folder full of my old examples. I didn't realize how many I had, but I've got a lot. So I'm going to show you some of my past examples. And these are over the course of years, too, so sometimes they fluctuate. Here are a couple of those characters in that lineup. You can see this egg to the right. And you can see the finished up versions of those characters. What we're going for here is accuracy. So I'm not trying to do my own style of these things. I'm not trying to do an approximation of it. I'm trying to get every proportion as exact as I can. So let me draw your attention to a couple small bits. Look at the man with the mustache. You see the shape that the outside of his mustache makes against his ear and cheek? I'm trying to get that same shape. Okay, it didn't quite work out. Can you see that this one is not as fat and mine is wider? I messed up a little. It's that kind of accuracy that I'm trying to get. Okay, so let's take a look at some. Um, this one's actually a more advanced one. After you can do these characters perfectly the way that they're represented, I wish this guy would stop revving his motorcycle, so it's annoying. Um, after you can do these perfectly, what you can do is try to do them from angles that are not on the sheets. But I'm not saying do that for homework. I'm saying I was trying to imagine this bare head from all of the various different angles that it might occur in a cartoon that are not just that first one. Same thing here, from the back, from the top, from a tilted side perspective, okay, with different expressions. Okay, That would be the fullest extent of this kind of um, exercise where you're trying to do full-on animation drawing. Okay, bulldog, elephant, there's a bear again. There are other sheets in Preston Blair. This one uh, is some sort of top hat wearing scarecrow. And occasionally you'll see like my corrections on here too. Um, I did try to do it step by step as in I labored on this one until I could get those proportions correct then moved on to the second one until I could get those basic shapes correct, then moved on to the third one to get all the details correct. Okay, um, If you want to work on it that hard, then it's really good for you, but your assignment's going to take a lot longer, so I'm not asking for that. Okay. Here you can see this little duck, and then first attempt, second attempt, and notes. All of these little markers are showing me the places where I went wrong. Um, in some of these, I do it in red. So this is where his cheek actually stops. I drew it all the way over here. This is where this laugh line actually ends up. I stopped too early. This is where his eye happens. This is where his eyebrow goes. This is where the side of his head should be, right? And then you can kind of see how those corrections evolve towards this third one. And even in this one, the neckline and the feathers weren't quite going the right direction. Here it is with the, uh, I think that's the fox guy from Pinocchio. I don't know why it's backwards, but this is the first attempt over here. And then this is the second one with corrections 
marked down, then a nice third attempt, and then finally one that tries to get the line quality just right. Okay. Goat, same thing. I think there's some others. Yeah, there we go. Squash and stretch dog head. It's in there. Uh, here are the little... This one's a much, much earlier one. This would have been um, one of the first ones I did, although this uh, folder is not in order. So this would be closer to what I'm asking you guys to do in your assignment, something like this. Although you can see, see how bad I used to be about those hairy lines? Oh my God, I used to do it all the time. Uh, and I had to really learn these lessons over a long period of time to stop doing that. By the way, you guys don't have to ink your final drawings. But if you want to attempt that, go for it. Okay. A few of the smaller animal heads. And then there's other sheets. This is the one I think I put in, in the homework because it had a lot of good notes that I had put on it about how I had done the bear head wrong. Wolf faces. Sometimes you'll see things like this, like look at his nose and his jaw and how there's these straight lines. I'm measuring a certain angle to try to keep that accuracy, accuracy as well, excuse me, um, which is not in the construction drawing, but I'm doing it to try to estimate more correctly. So you can do something like that as well. Sometimes it's helpful. Distance between ears, that sort of thing. Okay, I think that's the end of it. Any questions about that, what I'm showing? No? You guys still here? Nope. Did you guys die? Decide, oh shit, this class is going to be way too hard for me. I don't want to do it anymore. Good. Maybe. <laughs> So let's try to do this bear. Uh, I've got him up on the left-hand side of the screen because I'm right-handed. So I've got a nice big space to draw over here. And just know that it's very, very likely that the first time I do it, it's not even gonna be close, you know? And I'm gonna have to check over and over. So here's what I like to do initially. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more so I can draw right next to it as big as possible. Don't trace, right? Don't do this and think that you've learned anything, okay? You really haven't. Uh, you need to draw next to it at the very least, or even better would be on another monitor where you don't even have a frame of reference, but we'll do it right here next to it. So we're going to say this whole shape is about like that, but what I notice is that this is an egg, not a ball, right? It's pretty round over on this side, but on this side, it's stretching. So I want to make sure that down here, this is a little bit thinner, okay, kind of like this. Oops. something like this and so I'm gonna get my eraser get it down to something that I can at least recognize to compare okay and before I even overlap them I'm gonna to try to estimate and say what have I done wrong already how accurate is this thing that I've drawn so just take a look at that left and right can you guys spot anything that you predict will be wrong when I overlap them Yep, this part right here. Definitely we've got a big curving shape here, so probably it's got to come out like this direction. Okay, that's good. Anything else? That can't be it, right? There's got to be more. You're perfect. No, I know that's not true. So what about this angle versus this angle? Are they the same? The answer's no. Somebody say no. no. Hey, you did it. Oh man, I'm so proud of you guys. Yeah, it's got to lean over farther. Okay, so that means this line has got to go this way and I should erase out this part, which is gonna mess up the top. But hey, look, the top. I don't think the top lines up either. This had to be shorter. Okay, so I'm gonna try to hit this direction over here. Okay. At some point, you're going to run out of things and say, okay, I can't see clearly enough anymore. 
what it is I'm doing. And so I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and overlap the things. Let me try sure that up just a little bit better. Okay, we'll just say whatever. Close enough. Let's overlap them. Take a transform or a movement tool. In fact, I think the movement tool works better. And I'm just going to slide it over. Okay and get it in position try to like don't worry if you like drew a little bit down or up just get it where it looks like it makes sense and then we're going to start to make notes so either i can line it up like this make one big note or i can line it up like this and notice that i kind of stretched it overall in both directions so here is the actual endpoint. so i'm going to switch my colors in fact uh, usually x is the key to switch colors in both programs uh, photoshop and krita and i'm going to draw here's the real edge of the skull right there and then here and it disappears down in here but that's the real terminating points of this egg like that so let's move it back okay just like that and now take a look at it and can you see how different mine is now that I have those guidelines yeah are you sure <laughs> you guys are awfully quiet yeah Okay. Does that seem like it would help you? Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to take just leave it just as it is, right? And I'm going to draw over my guidelines to fix it. But what we should really do is try again from scratch now that we've got this information. Okay. Get rid of those. Take a look again. Okay. So big oval like that. And how pointy is it down here? It still doesn't look right. Did I do something wrong? Let's see. Oh, I still did something wrong somehow, even with my guideline. Okay, that. Let's move it back again. Not even sure how I managed that one, but I still had way too much space over here. There we go. That's a pointier line. So what I should try is from scratch, right? I could save this as my, my first draft on a layer if I really wanted to, or just move the layer like up or down and draw next to it or something like that. But I'm just gonna clear it, okay? And try again now that I've realized that, okay? So get my hand moving. It was more like this from what I saw. Still wanna get a nice round shape on the bottom here. Oh and round across the top, round, round, round. There we go. This one comes down and it's a little bit pointier down here. So little by little, I'm gonna get closer, but I am not saying you guys have to be this careful and studious about every single drawing. It's quite punishing to do. It's not very much fun, but it's good for your visual estimation. Get close though, right? Overlap it, make some notes, repair it, keep moving. Let's see. Is it better? Oop. It is better, right? Not quite there, because you can still see these lines are wandering away. But it's close enough now that I feel comfortable adjusting that in just through an estimate. So instead of there, it needs to terminate about here. And so I'll do one line here. Probably want to rotate to more comfortably draw down like that. Get rid of those extras. And then maybe just check one more time to see how close I got. Oh, accidentally hit a button on my pen. So that's close as I need it to possibly be. Okay, so that's fine. So let's move it back over here and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay. Is this freaking anybody out? Like, holy crap, this guy's spending so much time just drawing an egg. What have I done? I need to bail. Okay. Are you sure it's not scaring the crap out of you? I'm happy if it's not, but I'm sympathetic if it is. Okay. So then I would probably want to put those wrapping lines on. Now I can't even see that because I put it off the side here. If you have another monitor where you can have this open for instruction reasons, then that'd be a good idea. But let's go see what did that wrapping line look like? 
And keep in mind, see how different this and this and this and this and this, they're all very different. Their steps, they were making a book. They didn't really think anybody was going to use like a photo projector or something to overlap these. The steps are valid. Don't take these too seriously. Try to judge from the last one. But what I've got to do next is get a wrapping line representative of the center between the eyes, right? And after that, it's this belt line, which is going to be representative of the top of nose, bottom of the eyes wrapping around this way. Okay. So I'm going to move this back over, put it right about there, zoom in. And so now that I know that, I can sort of just look at the bear and see like, well, where would that where would that line go? Maybe I should use my note uh, blue, my note blue color. Let's make that brighter. Um, so if this is the center of the whole thing, right, then this kind of comes up this direction through here. It's going to go between the eyes and wrap around. So it's like this fat and kind of leaned in this direction. Okay, so that's going to help me understand. So then over here on my drawing, you could use a new layer if you don't want to mess up the, the egg, but I don't really think that's too much of a concern. Here's the center of this ball. Here's an angle, right? And I want it to be about that fat, about, whoop. oh, not close, not close enough there. Something like that. Draw light, okay? That's a little bit indistinct. Let's see if I can fix that. out here something like that let's see if that lines up mm, I'm a little too far okay so I know that my tendency is to not make it round enough so I've gone too far to the right it needs to come back just a bit okay let's line that up again about there come on brush there we go use my eraser okay make a note that it should come like here instead. Okay, zoom in. Let's try to make a nice round shape. There we go. In one stroke rather than in many, many smaller strokes. Okay, cleaning that up a little bit. Let's see if that's any better. That is much better. In fact, even though it's not 100%, that's close enough that I like it. I My line is a little bit bendier because his face is actually flat as a cartoon character on the front, but that doesn't really matter. Um, it's in the right location, so that's what I want. So that's good. I will go ahead and erase out those guides that I just made and work on the next one. So the next one is supposed to go, here's the center again around this and it's supposed to hit the top of the nose under the eyes and also it's kind of leaned to the side a little bit because these usually have to be perpendicular to each other these two lines so that one was leaned to the right and so this one's leaned down like that a little bit okay so just to get this one's gonna be tough because I gotta rotate my screen to have a convenient drawing angle something like this so it's not very wide this one. So let's try that. So I've got the right line, like this, not very wide, something like that. Should be close enough, I think. Okay, so let's lean it back and then move it over. What do you guys think? Close enough or do I need to tilt it? What I'm seeing is it probably needed to be tilted a little bit to where this line was going over here instead. What do you guys think? Yes. <laughs> well, we're trying to develop it. That's what we want to help you guys with. This sort of a very strict exercise is to help you develop that sensitivity to say here are the real differences that I can see here's the way that I would draw this thing to represent it in a way that is almost identical uh, I'll just go ahead and leave it 
for the sake of this demo, but yeah, I was seeing that it, it probably needed to be brought down a little bit. Okay. All right, what was next? You guys remember in the steps? The the yeah, the biggest shapes. Okay. So here, if I move this back over, let me rotate just a bit, and then move. Okay, so the biggest shapes, and I don't really know why they didn't include the ears, but I would include the ears in those because they're pretty big. Uh, the muzzle, right, is the thing that sticks out from the surface. The eyes themselves, or really the eye kind of mask is even bigger, but I guess placing the eyes makes more sense. And then the ears, all of those parts are going to make the most sense to include next, not the details. So here I'm lining it up, holding shift and moving it over just so it stays on a nice steady line, zooming back in, and then we'll try to add those pieces. All right, so here I've got my pencil. So this is sort of an oval, kind of in this direction, right? There's a little bit missing there when I do that. Let's see if I do it in blue instead. And again, the angle is not very convenient, but something about like that, slightly smaller. And then these two, there we know going through doo -doo -doo, this wrapping line on the left and right hand side, we've got one over here, one over there, and they're kind of making this intersecting angle in the muzzle. So there's sort of like a line that if you drew it, kind of intersect somewhere down below the nose rather than them just being like straight up and down next to each other, which would be a little bit less uh, interesting. Okay. So let's try those things. Let's see if I can get even close. So I've got one big oval here. It needs to go significantly out, which I'm not really doing the estimate very well. About like that. Let's see. I need to zoom in very hard to draw at this angle and do this at the same time. There we go. So something like that we'll estimate. And I could complete this, but like we're never going to really see that. Yeah, I'll complete it. And then the two eyes. So on either side, and we're going to try to make them go out at two different angles like that a little bit. So let's see. Kind of like that. Kind of like that. Okay, so remember, before I even overlap them, we want to look for inaccuracies, right? Where is it not right? Because that sort of judgment is going to help you to understand before you ever need to go back and forth, back and forth, comparing it over and over. Do you guys see inaccuracies? The inside of the eyes look a little too curved on yours. And they look really wide too, don't they? Yeah. But that's a good note. These aren't just ovals, are they? This is flatter. This is rounder, right? And this one, pointier on the bottom, rounder on the top. Those are good things to be sensitive to. I could have just been treating this like a basic sphere or basic uh, coin or something like that. But no, I'm going to shrink the size of my pencil just a little bit because it's a little bit too wide for this. So I want to take note that, yeah, this should probably be taller right and then it starts to arc down and it's also thinner at the bottom wider at the top kind of like this right same thing with that one wider at the top thinner at the bottom okay so let's get rid of a few little erroneous bits clean it up just a little okay so something a bit more like that, eh, approximately. And then also I said they were a little bit wide. Uh, I think I need to maybe move this over a little bit like that. And maybe this one too, just a little. So let's zoom in where I can make better, better lines. I like that. You can probably see the benefit of like saving this on a different layer because eventually this will get really messy, just like paper would. And then you might be really sorry if you don't have something to uh, bring up on a different layer. Okay, let's see, is that about right? 
Let's find out. Okay. We'll see. I may have gone too far and now pushed them too close together. What about the muzzle? How does that look to you guys? So it's angling that way, right? Whereas this is a lot flatter. And it's probably too tall, right? Look at the top. Uh-oh. Right? I'm way up there. So let's bring this down more like this. Right? Probably a bit too far. Make my eraser a little larger. Probably still a bit too pointy. Okay. Well, let's overlap it and see. That's been long enough. We try to do those comparisons, try to estimate and guess. It's going to help. Now we put it over here and we take a look at the actual things. Ah, the whole thing is too high. Right? Here's the actual line. Okay. Here's this eye. This eye was way out. And this one, flat, round. Okay, this one comes down this direction. That line is probably not bad, this one right here, because it's completing the rest of the muzzle. But the actual inked line ducked out earlier because it's more of like a wrinkle instead. So then this one on the bottom is not bad. It coincides with the bottom of the chin instead of this lip. So that's the lip. That's the chin. Let's bring this back over. So I was in the neighborhood, but not precisely there. So this is where it would be helpful if I had copied this layer in the first place so I could start from my clean oval, draw over the top of it and keep going. But since I didn't do that, then I pretty much just need to use my eraser and then try to repair this as we go. Okay, So I'm going to get rid of that, lighten these up, and then try to fix it over the top. So like I said, you don't have to start completely over and do a brand new attempt each and every time. But if you have the time to do that, then it's even better because you'll learn more. You'll get more muscle memory. And so now I can see, OK, so this goes here. Oh, I still got blue on. One second. So this goes here. Okay, It wasn't nearly as thin as I thought it was. But this side does kind of duck in a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. And then for this one, it was sort of angled farther out than I thought. I was making it too vertical. Okay. Something like this. And now my blue lines are just kind of left in there. That's fine. I needed them to do it right anyway. And then this one's been the toughest one because it's really misleading, first of all. But then it becomes either a smile line down here or it goes down to the chin. I had apparently drawn all the way down to the chin before, but pretty accurately down to the chin anyway. So we'll just put those both lines right there, just so that we know this is where the chin is, that's where the mouth is. Bring that back up. And now we should be pretty close to accurate because I was using my own guidelines, so let's see. Pretty much. Okay. All except for the top of this oval because I'm representing this shape rather than the actual pinch on top of there. So let's make sure that I draw that in. That would be this part. Okay. Is this helping you guys to see this slow bit by bit process of building this up? Yeah. Okay. And you guys know, this is not how I draw cartoons all the time, right? Yes. It's not. No. I know that seems obvious, but I want to make sure to say it out loud. This is not how you normally draw. This is how you analyze. OK? So what I'm doing right now is trying to say, in my head, I have certain biases, certain problems with the way that I see the world. I might see everything as being too thin and long, right? Or I might see everything as being far too boxy, and it's not actually that boxy. Or I may just draw things that way. And you're never going to know what those biases are unless you put them to the test, like this. Draw next to something, trying to be as accurate as possible. 
overlap it, and then find out how is yours different. What I found is that if I do this with a large number of diverse things, the kinds of inaccuracies tend to form a pattern, and that pattern is what my personal bias is. Like, for instance, I tend to make everything a little bit too wide and short. Right? So if I'm trying to draw perfect circles, my perfect circles tend to be a little bit squished vertically, just over and over and over again. Okay, And so to be aware of that means that I can fight it and I can intentionally draw them a little too high. Of course, that's not a circle, but just a little bit of resistance. And then maybe I can get something closer to a circle. That actually looks wrong entirely, but it's just an example. Do you guys want me to continue or do you think that's enough for a good demonstration and we can move on to something else? Yeah? Well, it's really just the same thing. Like they are shapes, they're on the major mass. I'm not going to give them all of this detail, right? I'm just going to represent them as kind of an egg like that and add those extra details later and this one too, kind of like an egg, although we can see there's kind of this cut. And so we probably want to put that in there too. Okay. So it, it, here it starts to end up looking like Mickey Mouse when I do this, but those two circles are the ones I'm trying to place on mine. Okay. So let's see, I might check, here's the center line of that whole skull to see where this overlaps. Right? Or I might find an angle like from some other things to try to say there's the edge of that ear if I go through the center and the edge of this nose. Whatever is going to be helpful to place them. So we'll say here's the center line. Okay, If I go up here, so this one has to come out to about there maybe to over here. How far away from the head? Kind of like this. Let's see. Does that look about right? A little taller? Okay. We'll say that's fine. Okay. Or, and I could also check like the top line versus the center line of my other one to line them up. So I'm seeing like the top of this ear is almost collinear with like the center of that one. So I could do that to help myself out so I know it's going to stop somewhere around there. How far away does it go? It looks like if I duplicated this, it's almost like two ear lengths away from the center. So you could say somewhere around there. So now I just try to place it kind of like that. Mm, let's see, a little higher I think, kind of like up here. All right, let's test that. We'll see if that's close enough. I know that there's little inaccuracies, but these are pretty broad measurements. And we should probably try to guess first, of course. Um, not bad, not bad. I think I went just a little bit too far over here. So instead of there, it stops about here. But that one's, yeah pretty much right on, maybe a little bit farther down, it could have gone down to here. And then the cut I didn't even try to put in yet. So let's move them back. Yeah, so they were close. So this one needed to come down to there. And this one needed to stop earlier. Kind of like that. Okay. So yeah, those are the major pieces. I mean, I guess we could put in the, the large mask on the face because it's the, the next most important bit. Um, I could be smart this time and copy paste my drawing to another layer or not. <laughs> it's up to you how much work you want to redo, how careful you want to be. Uh, usually you can copy a whole layer just by dragging it to like the new icon at the bottom. That's in Photoshop, I guess. For this one, I'm going to have to duplicate uh, Control D, maybe Control J, Control J, Control J would have duplicated. So now I've got this copy here, just in case I completely mess up my drawing, 
and I'll keep drawing on this layer up here. I'm going to switch to my eraser, get rid of everything that's over the original. Okay, And then sometimes I'll even lighten up what I've already got a little bit just so that it's not getting dark and super hard to deal with. Okay. Uh, there we go. So what did I say we we're going to do? The face mask, right? So it's going to be on the center line somewhere on this line. Okay. And I can kind of look at where this would have completed. So it's like this ear comes down to here. And so it's going to be somewhere in this region, I think is where that widow's peak kind of shape is. But then there's this arc that goes up all the way and it just about touches where the ear coincides with the head. So right about up there. The other one, I don't really know. I've got to find how far into the rest of the, the shape it goes. If I do redraw that center line though, I think this will hit that center line. So somewhere down here on this line is where the eye mask is going to hit the cheek. Okay. And so if I draw over, oh, it's about to the bottom of this eye. So bottom of the eye, right about there is where I'm estimating that's going to hit. And this one curves outward and back in. So we're getting a, a kind of rough shape like this. Let's say, let's go a little farther like that. Okay, so something like that. And then this one goes up and back down also. How does that look? It doesn't look tall enough. I think it's like this. Oh, my eraser's too big now. And then this one needs to be a little taller, I think. Probably like there. And then a little bit thinner and sharper coming down to here. It gets pretty straight by the end there, it looks like. Trim some of that down. So kind of like that. I keep wanting to round it out some more. Maybe that's just maybe that's just my habit or something. Well, we'll say that that's a good place to start anyway. Oh, it's probably this bit. Like that. Okay, we'll, we'll say that's probably as close as I can get there. And now let's do the cheek. The cheek is coming down to here. It's almost like where this ear attaches, but I don't have that mm, halfway. Halfway between the center and the edge of the, of the whole head. So maybe like here, okay? And then, well, I mean, it kind of disappears at around here or so, but it's just one big arc, so one big arc like that. It doesn't really go upward either. How's that? Let's see. Keep doing a few weird lines, something like that. Okay, let's try that. <clears throat> Tough to say because all my lines are black. Let me reduce this a lot. Um, not bad. There's only one really inaccurate part I see, and it's right here up at the top. So I just drew on the wrong layer. Right here. This part I missed. Everything else, though, yeah, everything else, though, pretty close. Okay, so we bring it back out. In fact, I like that faded that much. I'm going to leave it like that. It makes it a lot easier. Okay, so then this one goes up to there and back down. That's why it looks so weird. There we go. Okay. Did that help, Nate? Okay, and you see what I would do for the rest of it, right? I just keep doing that smaller and smaller and smaller until I finally have everything. Once you've measured accurately, you can also rely on your past measurements. So if I know that I've placed all of these bits in the right spot, now I can look at the place where these two things coincide to estimate maybe where the, the corner of the mouth is or where the, the nose line is, something like that right? Because I'm already relying on my own past measurements. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anybody have questions? No? 
comments, panic attacks. So this also applies to like the other stuff as well, right? Um, the, the eggs? Yeah. Yeah. So you're trying to get a concept. One of the concepts is that we can make something look like it's three-dimensionally angling in different directions by using these wrapping lines. Okay. So in this whole egg, and let me just get down here and zoom in. In this whole egg, the center point of everything is right there. But these wrapping lines are going along these cardinal directions. Here's the height of the egg, right? Because this is the skinny direction. And then here's the width of the egg. Both of those lines are going to hit doop, doop, doop on the corners on those lines. But they're going to be fatter or thinner depending on how much the thing is uh, rotated. I did that one really badly, didn't I? This one is supposed to go here. There we go. So it's going to hit. Boom, boom. So if this egg right, is tilted more towards us, then this belt line is going to come down farther and farther and farther until finally we're just looking at the top of the entire egg. right? If this egg is not tilted as far down just a little bit, then this is going to be closer to a flat line. Okay, so that's the concept. But in addition to that, we've got these examples that we can draw from and just copy in order to see how accurately we can draw, period. Right? And being able to accurately draw, accurately see things is how you know that you can rely on your observations and understand them. Okay, so there's two parts to this. One is these are three dimensional shapes that we're kind of learning to tilt around. The other is we're trying to just see, can I see an oval as the right oval? Can I see this bending line as the right shape and represent that with a line? Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Anybody else? Any questions? Cool. That's basically it. That's all I wanted to lecture on. If you guys want me to show or talk about more things, ask now. Otherwise, that's all. And the homework has been moved from being due on Sunday to being due on Tuesday at midnight because you guys' first class meeting of the week is always on a Wednesday. So you'll always have a complete week to work on something. No? Good? Lecture over? Sounds like lecture over. All right. Good luck working on this. I'm going to stop the recording.